Welcome. This is my next episode of The Sun Now. This is going to be a review of the solar activity during February of 2019. So what has been happening in February? The sun has been relatively quiet, with 27 of the 28th days having no sunspots on the sun at all. We had one sunspot group, which was relatively small, that lasted for a whole day. We've had several small coronal holes, which resulted in minor geomagnetic storms caused by high-speed solar winds. There have been a couple of CMEs and no comets crashing into the sun. So all in all, a pretty quiet month. It's not possible to get a much simpler plot of sunspot number than this one. We just had one group appear on the 13th of February and nothing else. But what we'll do now is take a look at the magnetic movie of February. Even though there are a few spots, there's still magnetic activity on the sun. So we're going to take a look at this SDOHMI movie to see what's going on. Now, you can see the magnetic field here in terms of black and white. Black polarity field is going into the sun. White polarity field is coming out of the sun. In the Northern Hemisphere during solar cycle 24, black polarity should be leading, white polarity following. In the Southern Hemisphere, it should be the other way around, white polarity leading and black polarity following. So let's take a look at the movie. And you can see early on a region comes around the east limb of the sun and approaches sun center. Let's take a look at these regions in a bit more detail. The regions I've marked in red here show black polarity leading and white polarity following in the northern hemisphere. So these are standard solar cycle 24 regions. However, if you look at higher latitudes, these two small regions marked with yellow, you can see that the opposite polarity uh, is leading. White is leading. Uh, and black trailing. These are possible indications of solar cycle 25 starting. Well, let's see what happens next. As that region uh, approaches the west limb, a new region forms in the southwest. You can see it there. It has black polarity leading and white polarity following. That's the right polarity for the northern hemisphere. Uh, it's the wrong polarity for the Southern Hemisphere. So this too is a solar cycle 25 region. Now I've shown you what to look for. I'm going to let you look through the whole video again and see if you can determine which regions are solar cycle 24 and which regions are solar cycle 25. Remember, for solar cycle 24, it is black leading in the Northern Hemisphere and white leading in the Southern Hemisphere. For solar cycle 25, it's white leading in the Northern Hemisphere and black leading in the Southern Hemisphere. Hard, isn't it? So you may want to run through this movie several times, first concentrating on the Northern Hemisphere, then concentrating on the Southern Hemisphere. So what does the corona look like in February of 2019? I'm going to show you a 28-day movie from the SDO AIA instrument in the 193 channel, which is about 1.2 million degrees. You can see a lot of coronal holes here. These are those dark areas that are distributed all around the sun. These are open field lines along which the solar plasma streams out at high speed into the solar wind and can cause geomagnetic storms. You can see the north polar coronal hole just about and the south polar coronal hole which seems much more prominent. That is due to the fact that the sun is tilted away from us at the moment so you see the southern hemisphere much more clearly than you can the north. So this is the solar coronal plasma at about 1.2 million degrees and we're going to run this movie for 28 days. One of the things to note about the corona is that it never seems to be quiet. There's lots of little bright points that are coming and going. Those are those bi bipoles that I was showing you earlier. Uh, and the whole quiet sun network seems to be moving all around all the time. Those black flashes in front of the screen are when the Earth gets between the sun and the satellite. With solar activity being so low, one would expect the coronal mass ejection activity to uh, be minimal as well. And in fact, that is the case. The bright object you see in the bottom left of this picture is Mercury and it's moving off to the left. Now you'll also note that there's a black line near it at the moment. That's the thing that holds the occulting disk in place. And halfway through the video, they flip the SDO spacecraft so that will then suddenly appear on the right, but that is uh, just uh, an instrumental change. 
There's one going off the east limb to the left. And there's one going off the west limb to the right. You may have seen some bright objects flash into the screen. Those aren't comets. Those are just little bits of space junk that are orbiting the SOHO instrument and every now and then gets in the Lasco field of view. As you've seen, we had relatively few and small coronal holes crossing the sun in February and just a couple of coronal mass ejections, which looked fairly weak. So it's not surprising then that geomagnetic activity during February was relatively modest. We had two active periods, one at the beginning of the month and one at the end of the month. In fact, we had a KP equals five on the 28th, not shown here. But nonetheless, overall, the month was relatively quiet. So in summary then, we had low sunspot activity for the month. Uh, so we may well be near solar minimum at the moment. There is no sign of a grand solar minimum, and I'm not sure what the signs would be, and we won't know about that for several years yet anyway. There are indications of the reverse in the fact that solar cycle 25 seems to be trying to get its act together, and that would indicate that solar cycle 25 is going to be at least as large, if not larger, than solar cycle 24. Coronal mass ejection and coronal hole activity was low and resulted in relatively modest geomagnetic activity through the month. So until next time, goodbye.